I had an interesting weekend. I was pretty sick and uh, almost didn't run the half marathon that I had scheduled, but decided, hey, worst comes to worst, I have a bad race, the world will keep spinning. So I jumped in the car and headed that way. When all was said and done and I crossed the finish line, I ended up with a personal best of over 15 seconds a mile in a race that I almost walked away from because I didn't think I would be at my best. And when I regained composure, settled in a little bit, I had to wonder how many times almost has gotten in my way. How many times a simple decision to stop, to not go or wait for later has changed the outcome of my life? How many times has it changed the world? How many potential bestsellers were almost started? How many potential greats almost stuck with it? How many friendships almost remained intact? Think about how fickle our world is, how these simple decisions to start, to go, to not drop the pen or hit the snooze button can change everything. And after that race, I told myself that I will never get in my own way again. I will never sell myself short. I will do everything in my power to be on the right side of almost. The worst outcome is so much better than wondering. You know, and there are moments that we question if it's worth it, if it matters, if there really will be payout. And being pragmatic, you know, maybe there will, maybe there won't. But the moments that we remember in life, the things that end up meaning the most to us, they don't come from almost jumping. They're born from the recognition that failure will not kill us. An opportunity hides behind mountains of almost. You know, you can do what you've always done or you can go further. You can keep your stories and ideals locked away in your head, or you can share them with the world. You can worry about the collapse, or you can build. Change the architecture of humanity, contribute something extraordinary, not be a victim of almost, but go in with the intent of leaving a mark, of holding your ground. You know, there are no certainties in life, that's for sure, but I can promise if you never leave, my friend, you will never arrive. And with so many potential destinations out there, who wants that? Who wants to pay the cost of admission and not see the show? Be the person 30 years from now, talking, joking with your friends, family, and, and teammates about how you almost didn't go. You almost said no. You almost let your insecurity and doubt get the best of you. But then you took a step back and you remembered what matters. Agrippa said to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. We're going to be taking our scripture text today from Luke chapter 23 is where I'll be talking from our story. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, the people. He said unto them, you have brought me a man who you have said has provoked the people. I, Pilate said, have examined him in your presence and I have found no basis for the charges that you have brought against him. Neither has Herod, because you see, Herod has sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing, nothing to deserve the death penalty. Therefore, I'm just going to punish him and then I'm going to, to release him. Uh, but the scripture says with one voice they began to cry away with him, away with him. I think the key that you got to get from this verse is they cried with one voice, away, away with him, away with him. Release unto us Barabbas. You may say, who is Barabbas, Pastor? Uh, Barabbas was the town terror. He was the murderer. Uh, wanting, you see, to release Jesus, uh, Pilate appealed unto them uh, again. Uh, but they just kept 
shouting. Uh, and their shouts just got louder and louder and louder. Uh, crucify him. Uh, crucify him. Uh, crucify him. Uh, for the third time he spoke to them. Why? What crime has this man committed? Uh, I have found in him no grounds uh, for the death penalty, therefore, uh, I will have him punished, uh, and then I will release him. Uh, but with loud shouts, uh, they insistently demanded uh, that he be crucified. And their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released a man who was the terror of the town, who was the murderer, and he surrendered Jesus unto them. A poet once wrote these words, of all the words of tongues are penned, the saddest are these, it might have been. If that is true, then one of the most tragic words in the human language must be the word almost. Almost speaks of aborted opportunities and missed chances. I am sure that as long as this world has existed, almost has dotted the pages of every human life. I almost climbed that mountain. I almost, right, reached that go. I almost closed that deal. I almost, some of us, ate all of my food. Some may not have problems with that. But I almost got there in time. I'm going to read that one for somebody else. I almost got there in time. We've all We've all experiences, haven't we, the almost in our lives. I suppose that the most famous almoster in history would have to be Pilate because he almost released Jesus. He almost leveled the gavel and said, not guilty. He almost said, I dismiss all of these charges because this man is innocent. He almost set him free. What a change that would have made in our perception of Pilate. Why we may have even been calling him Saint Pilate today. He almost did it, you see, but he didn't. Yet he could have. And that, my friend, is the tragedy. He had the authority to do it. Do you understand this morning that he wore the signature ring that said that he had the power to do it? All that he had to do was speak, simply speak the word directly and Jesus would have been set free he did it almost verse 23 of Luke 23 tells us but with loud shouts they insistently demanded that, that he be crucified and the Bible says and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demands. He could have listened to other voices. We could, he could have listened to someone else. I suppose though that the voice that he was listening to, we could say it was a voice of evil. Maybe we could really break it down to where we live. It was the voice of of Satan. Uh, we've all, every one of us uh, that are alive today, that are sitting in this auditorium, uh, that have breath uh, in your body. Brother Tommy, Pastor Tommy uh, did the breath check. Uh, every one of us that have breath today, hear me. We all, we all have heard that voice too, haven't we? We've all heard that voice say, go ahead. 
and do it. No one will ever know. Or just what's one little drink? What, 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 what's one little puff? What's one little sneaking around? Satan beckons us uh, into the paths that we know uh, that we should not go. Uh, but Pilate didn't have to listen uh, to their voices. Uh, there were other voices, uh, you see, he could have listened to. Uh, he could have listened to his own wife's voice uh, who said, uh, who sent him a note uh, and said, This night uh, I have been troubled uh, in a dream. Uh, don't have anything uh, to do do with this innocent man he could he could have listened to her voice and he almost he almost did he could have listened to his own voice Pilate was no dummy he knew exactly what was going on he knew that the chief priest was corrupt and greedy. Uh, he knew uh, that they were lying uh, about Jesus. Uh, he could have listened uh, to his own voice uh, of reasoning, uh, to his own common sense. Uh, he almost did. But he didn't. Pilate is not the only one. Who plays the game of almost. Many that I am acquainted with play the game of almost too. Preacher, I almost decided to serve Jesus today. I almost, preacher, took that invitation. I almost said here I am Lord I surrender I surrender all I would give anything to be able to just bust out and sing in that right now I surrender I surrender all there are many who sit in services. There are many who feel the divine power and the divine presence of God, but yet they almost take that leap. Almost decide to become a Christian. But the Bible is very clear to us. He teaches us very clearly that there are no almost with God. There is no almost heaven. There's no almost place where you can go. It's either, you see, we go to heaven or we go to hell. And Pilate's tragedy, if you and I are not careful, uh, will be our same tragedy. Uh, you know, there is probably nothing more consistent about life than its inconsistencies. Life is like a tall salad. Because when you stick your fork in that tall salad, you really never know what you're going to pull out. Life is like a roller coaster with all of its ups and its downs, its twists and its turns, and you really never know where you're going to end up. But if there is one very strong message that comes to us from Calvary, it is that God is able uh, to weave all of this back together again. Uh, he can take all of the inconsistencies, uh, all of the fragments, uh, all of the pieces of our lives, uh, and he is able to weave them back together uh, and turn it into a beautiful tapestry just as he has planned for our lives. 
You know, sometimes in our lives, uh, we take detours. Uh, sometimes in our lives, uh, we take different choices and we go down different decisions. Uh, and because of those choices and because of those decisions, uh, sometimes it brings pain into our lives, don't it? Uh, sometimes it brings anguish upon us. Uh, sometimes it brings things upon us uh, that we really don't want to have to go through. Uh, but because of that choice uh, or because of of that decision uh, we find ourselves in that place uh, but can I tell you today uh, the beautiful thing about Jesus Christ is uh, even though we make a bad choice uh, or we take a bad direction uh, or we go in a bad way uh, God is able uh, to take all the fragments of our lives uh, all of the broken pieces of our spirits uh, all the broken pieces of our lives uh, and begin to put them back together again I had a grandmother that was an incredible, incredible woman. I love my grandma Pomeroy. She was so awesome. She was so incredible. I know you can't imagine this, but they say, I don't remember it, but they said when I was growing up, I was pretty much of a handful. I can't see that, but that's what they say. But we would go to Grandma's house, and there was something about getting in that car for three days, having window time for three days, driving from St. Louis, Missouri, all the way up to Rupert, Idaho. I'll never forget that trip as a young boy. I can remember the excitement that began to build on the inside of me. I remember the anticipation that began to grow as we began to get closer and closer to grandmother's house. I, I can just, I can even see it right now as I am preaching this message, uh, the excitement that began to swell on the inside of me. Grandma was just that special person. Uh, she never seen the fault in you. She always seen the good in you. And it was amazing for those two weeks when I was at grandma's house, uh, I was an angel. In fact, my mom and dad threatened to leave me with my grandma. I wish they would have. It would have been a great thing. But there was just something about grandma. But I'll never forget, grandma liked to do that sewing, stitching. I, I don't know what they call it. They got a special, special name for it. To, but she would make all kinds of stuff. And and uh, she would make all kind of beautiful things. And, and man, when you would look at it, wow, it was so beautiful. But there was a few times I turned some of her artwork over. I'm just going to tell you, the backside was pretty ugly. The backside looked like she missed some directions. Because there was one that was from here to there and here to there and there. And I'm going, how in the world did she ever get what's on the front of this out of what's on the back of this. And sometimes in our lives, all we see is the back side of our lives. And we're wondering, how can God do anything with my life? How can God do anything with this part of me? But hear me this morning. The message that we need to hear is this. Because one day the sun is going to shine in your life. And the next day it's going to rain. One day. One day everything is going to be going so good and so perfect. And the next day, your world is going to come crashing down around you. One day. One day, you're going to be young and healthy like I am. And the next day, the doctor's going to tell you, I don't have good news. Yet Jesus is saying, it really doesn't matter. Because all of you who have really placed your life in my life, if you have put your hands 
in my hands. If you were not the person that said almost, almost, I'm going to live for God. Almost, thou persuadest me to be a Christian. I almost gave my life to God. I almost came to that altar. I, I almost did that prayer time. I almost committed myself. I almost. But see, to you and I who have, we're going to find that righteousness, that goodness, that victory. We're not going to experience defeat. Uh, we'll find uh, that you will find your despair is replaced with eternal hope uh, because that is the message uh, of Calvary. Uh, can I tell you today uh, that it doesn't matter how hard uh, this life gets. Uh, it doesn't matter how hard a day uh, may breathe down upon you. Uh, when you understand uh, that your hand uh, is in the hand uh, of the great I am, uh, then you understand uh, that he'll make a way uh, where there seemeth to, to be no way. Uh, what the devil wants to do is the devil wants to get you in a mindset of being on the wrong side of almost. I almost spoke in tongues. I, 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 I almost gave my life to God. I, I almost really made that commitment. I almost said surrender. see the ultimate tragedy in every service is there are people who are almost ready to make that decision. There are people who stand on the break of saying I surrender. I surrender all. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to give him everything that I have. But when it comes down to that time, when it comes down to that moment, we're too cold because the air conditioners are blowing on us, or this isn't right, or that isn't right, or this isn't happening correct, or that isn't happening correct. But as we stand this morning, and as they begin to sing, I wonder if you would just close your eyes right now. And I wonder if you would just yield your mind unto the Lord this very moment. And would you be, ask yourself, am I on the right side of almost? Oh, yes, Lord. Would you just make this your prayer right now? I surrender all, all to be my blessed Savior. I, I wonder if you would reach over and grab somebody by the hand and say, Would you walk down to the front with me? And would you just come together saying, God, I want to surrender it all. Whether you're a member of this church or not, nobody's going to pray with you. Nobody's going to mess with you. This is just your own long personal time right now. Come on.
thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. you that have come, would you just raise your Make sure we're on the right side. Father, today we're so thankful for your beautiful presence. God, we're so thankful that we were able to be in your house. And God, we're so blessed to be able to have the opportunity of saying, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my life. God, we give ourselves to you. Not a part of us, not a little bit of us. But God, we give it all to you. Because, God, we truly want to be on the right side of almost. God, I pray today. I pray in this house for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. I pray for those that are watching by Facebook and those that are listening by radio. You know the condition of every man and every woman. For your word has said that you have taken time to search us and know us. You also told us in 2 Peter, God, that you're not willing that any would perish. God, I pray. I pray before that day dawns on our lives. Before this body goes back to the dust from whence it come. I pray, Lord, that we would be on the right side. That we wouldn't put off tomorrow what we can take care of today. And God, we wouldn't say, I'll do it next week when we can take care of it right now. There is a heaven to gain. And there really is a hell that we don't want to go to. But our decisions and our choices, whatever side of almost we're on, will determine where we'll spend eternity. God, we've heard it preached a long time heard many songs about it. We're witnessing your scripture being fulfilled in our very ears that men and women are being more lovers of pleasure than lovers of God. But that doesn't mean you're not coming back. That doesn't mean you're not coming back for a body that's on the right side of almost. God, we're doing everything in our power to make sure we hear those words well done. Because, God, we do want to do well. We do want to do well in this very trying time. In this very challenging hour, God, we want to do our very, very, very best. So, Lord, we sing it one more time to you. I, I, surrender, I surrender. God, I surrender. Yes, I do, Lord. All to be my blessed Savior, I surrender. We 
would you just reach over and grab that neighbor by the hand and would you raise it to the heaven right now and let's sing it together. Come on. We surrender around here. We surrender.